Hi, I'm Allison, your Green Schools Officer. Today we are going to make origami bees. But before we get folding, let's see what a bee is up to outside. Bees are a familiar sight in gardens, parks, and schools all around Ireland once spring arrives. But how much do you actually know about them? As you learn how to make your own bee, I will give you some fun facts about them. To start with, what's this bee doing buzzing all over these flowers? Well, bees eat nectar, and nectar is inside the petals of flowers. Plants don't just make nectar to be nice to the bees, they want the bees to eat it. That's because while bees are eating nectar, something called pollen gets stuck to them. Then, when the bee moves on to another flower, the pollen falls off and lands on the new flower. If this happens, that flower can now make a seed and a new plant can grow. Plants need pollen from each other to make new seeds, and they can't stand up and walk over to each other, so they rely on insects, like bees, to move it for them. This is called pollination. What we're going to need for our bee origami is we're going to need a square piece of paper. Ideally, this square piece of paper has a white side and a colored side. You might choose to use a yellow piece of paper, but if you don't have that, feel free to choose whatever color you'd like. You might use an orange piece of paper, a copybook piece of paper, or even a newspaper. You get to choose what color bee you make today. Now, if you're starting with a square piece of paper, you're not going to need many extra items. But if you're making a square, some things you're going to need is a ruler, a pencil, and scissors. Whether you're starting with a square or a rectangle, you're also going to need a yellow and a black marker. Let's move all of this to the side and start with a blank copybook page. Now, right now, this sheet of paper is a rectangle. One side is longer than the other. We need a square. We need all four sides to be the same length. So the way that we can do that is we take our ruler from before we're going to measure the smaller side. Mine is 13 and a half, 13.5. So I need the long side of my rectangle to be the same. So I'm going to measure right on the edge, 13.5. Right there, might be hard to see. And I'm going to get my pencil and I'm going to mark right there, okay? With that, I can make a line, a nice straight line across. And with the scissors or help from an adult, I'm gonna cut a nice straight line across. So now I have all four sides the same length. So I have my square. If you're using a recycled piece of paper with a cool design on it, maybe like the newspaper. You can see I have the blue here and then the writing and a tree. Now is the time to decide what you want on the wings and on the head and back. All right, so if you look at this piece of paper here, the yellow, so you can see we have our yellow and black B stripes here and we have a black triangle here. So I know that these, this is the back and this is the head, all right? Then if I flip over the page, here is all white. So somewhere in here, we're gonna fold up and we're going to get our wings, okay? So now is the time to decide which one is gonna be the wing design and which one's going to be the head and back design, okay? I'm gonna stick with this yellow piece of paper with the lines and the head, but you decide now which design you want on which side. Don't worry about coloring the stripes or the black yet. We'll do that in a second. 
While you're choosing your bee's colour, let's check back outside to see what's buzzing around. It's easy to get bees mixed up with other insects like wasps. Both buzz around flowers and often have black and yellow markings. Some bees are long and slender, which is the same shape as a wasp. This can be a bit confusing. The easiest way to tell if something is a bee is if it has hair. Bees always have what looks like fur or hair. Wasps don't. That's simple. Let's clear our workspace a bit. Now, we have our color side up. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to flip over to the white side, the side that's going to be your wings. Now, we're going to fold in diagonals. So we're gonna go corner to corner, corner to corner, okay? Folding, and this is a good test to see if you have a square because we have our two triangles. Okay, so we have that fold and then corner to corner for the other diagonal. Perfect, okay, and now that is open. The next step that we're going to do is we're gonna take our two corners and we're going to bring them into the middle. Folding over into the middle, press down, folding over into the middle and press down, okay? The next step is we need to get these stripes and this black on our paper. I already have these on here, but if you don't, what we're going to do is we're gonna open up to our colored side and color this whole triangle that we just unfolded. See, it's folded there. Color that black. And then this side that we unfolded, we have our B stripes. So why don't you get coloring that with your black marker. When you're using your black marker, make sure you're minding the edge. Maybe put a piece of paper underneath so that way you're not coloring onto the table. After you're done coloring, it might be a bit wet, so just wait for a few minutes until it dries. You don't want black fingers at the end. While you color in your bee's head and stripes, let's talk about the different types of bees. Did you know there are 98 different types of bees in Ireland? Bees come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and even colors. We can split them into three different groups, bumblebees, honeybees, and solitary bees. Bumblebees are the type you probably see the most. They are round and hairy all over, just like the one we saw at the beginning of the video. There are 21 native species of bumblebee in Ireland. They are usually yellow or orange and black. You can tell bumblebees apart by two things, the color of their tails and the number of stripes they have. Honeybees, like the one we saw with the blue flowers on the rosemary shrub, are the only type of bee that make honey. They can look like wasps since they are long and thin, but remember, honeybees have hair. Solitary bees are smaller than the other bees. There are 77 different types and come in all different colors. Now that you have your stripes and your black triangle, let's get back to folding. So the next thing we're going to do, those two triangles that you just colored, Remember, you've already folded them down, so fold them back to the middle where you folded them before. Okay, so we have the black triangle, that's gonna be the head, and then the stripes down here, that's the body. So take that whole thing and flip it over. So now you just have the blank space here. So our next fold is going to be, we're taking this edge here and we're bringing it to this line that we made before, okay? So this corner to the middle here. So pull that down. You can see the edge is coming to the line. The corner is down to the center point. You can see the black bit is here. We're gonna push that down. Okay, we're gonna do that on the other side as well. This corner coming to here, this line coming to this line. Fold it down and push down, trying not to overlap. All right, so now we have a square and two rectangles. 
Have you ever heard the term queen bee? Both honeybees and bumblebees start off with a queen bee. She is the mother of all the other bees. She builds a nest for her colony and lays eggs. Female bees are workers and male bees are drones. The female workers do all the work of keeping the nest clean and finding food. Okay, our next step that we're going to do is we're gonna flip our work over. Okay, as you can see the stripes and a black square here. So this is going to end up being the head. Now, do you see this line down the middle here? We're going to use that line to fold upwards. Okay, so we're gonna take this side and fold it up. But we're not folding it all the way flat. We're actually going to fold kind of similar to how we did before. So we're pushing this up here. And you see this line? We're going to pull that down so it's straight here, pulling this edge to the middle, okay? Let's see if we can do that. So this edge to the middle, this corner to this corner. Pulling down and trying not to go over that center line. So it kind of looks similar to what we did on the other side. We have the white here and then the middle color. It's the same thing, this corner to this corner, this edge to the middle. Okay, folding over and push down. Great. Honeybees have a special way to tell each other how to find the best flowers to eat. They will do a dance in the beehive that gives directions to the other workers to follow. This is called a waggle dance and it is the bees version of Google Maps. Next thing we're going to work on is we are going to work on the wings. So this flap that's up here, pull that back down and then push that down again. Okay, so you can see the black and you can see the stripes. These two triangles here, they're going to become our wings. Now the wings aren't super pointy on our finished B. See how they're flat? So we're going to make them flat here. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take the end here, fold it up, push down. On the other side, fold it up and push it down. Now this one's a bit tricky. Open that fold back up, open up the big triangle and then push that inside. Okay, it's a bit tricky. You see it's going in just like that. Okay, and then you fold it down. So that way you don't see this extra little triangle. You see that on all the wings? Okay, so let's try it again on this side. So that fold that I made before, I'm pulling it up. I'm opening this up, opening the wing, and then pushing the triangle inside out almost, so it's hidden underneath. Okay, so there we have it. The two sides are pushed in. Now give that a go. Bees actually have four wings. It can look like they just have one pair, but if you get close enough, they're actually two pairs which slightly overlap. They have powerful wing muscles which allow them to fly several kilometers to find food. The more wildflowers we allow to grow, the easier it is for a bee to find food. All right, so we have our two wings, the body and the head. Now this next step is what we're going to do to fold the wings over the back. So you can see that this lifts up just like this. So we're actually going to work underneath this part, okay? So you can see we did something underneath the head over here. I'm gonna put him aside. You can move this whole line here, this whole edge back and forth underneath the square that's his head. So lifting that head up, you can see underneath, you're going to pull this whole edge over and you're gonna meet in this center line. The point is pointing you to the center line so you can use that as a guide. Folding it over, try not to go over that center line. Okay, you can see underneath the head. 
good, okay. Now push that down all the way up. Okay, you can see the wing there. Now on the other side, this edge underneath the head is coming over to the center line. Okay. Trying not to overlap. Perfect, okay. And now we don't really need to see under there anymore. So we can push down the black head. Did you know that only female bees can sting? Males do not have a stinger at all. If a honeybee stings you, it will die because its stinger is shaped in a way that makes it get stuck in your skin and falls off the bee. Bumblebees can sting more than once, but all bees are usually very gentle and only sting if they're protecting their nest or they're afraid. Our next step is we are going to flip over the bee. You can see the back of the head here, so this might be a little bit closer there. Looks like I may have folded out a tiny bit, but as long as you have some black here, maybe it's all black because the sides are together. So the edges are what we're going to focus on right now. They kind of are like little ears almost. So what we need to do is we need to actually fold these two corners in, and then we're going to fold them back out. So we're gonna crimp them a bit. So that might be a bit confusing, but let's start with folding in. So let's fold this side in, and then let's fold this side in. Okay, so that's folded in. Now the next step, we're gonna take just a bit of this and fold it back out. Not the whole way, just maybe half of the triangle, we're gonna fold back out. Do you see that? Just a little point is sticking back out. Okay, and on the same same deal on the other side here. Same thing. So we've crimped it back out, not the whole triangle. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Yep, there's two little ones there. All right, then we're going to make his nose. So let's fold over this whole triangle up here. Not the two triangles we just made, just the whole triangle up at the end. Okay, fold that flat, but he doesn't have a, a flat head there. So we're gonna do the same thing like we did on the sides and just fold a bit of the triangle back. Okay, so we can see his little nose there. All right, let's check. There we go. So you have the nose and the two little sides there. So you can leave him like this, but I kind of want to see a bit more of the stripes. So what I do is I fold just here so I can see a bit more. But if you look underneath the wing there, the color doesn't go the whole way up. So you have to be a bit careful with this. So I'm gonna hold my finger where I know the colors are stopping and fold in. Okay, there we go. I get to see a bit more of his stripes now. Okay, do you see the difference between the two wings? And I like it because it kind of sticks up a bit so it looks like he's about to go for a fly. All right, and bend this side over. They might not match, that's all right. Okay, now you can see both wings are ready to go fly and they are finished. The way bees can sense what is around them is very different to us. On their heads, they have eyes that see and long antennae which allow them to smell and feel what's around them. They don't have a nose or ears like ours, but the antenna more than make up for that. And there you have it. Your origami bee is complete. Great job and thanks for learning with us at Green Schools.